Okay, so like all booktubers everywhere, I said I wasn't going to do another book haul for the year. And I'm back two months later with some books to go through and show everyone. So I'm a cliche. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to The Fictional Escapist. My name is Chris and today's video is a much smaller book haul than you would normally see on the channel, but a book haul nonetheless. Um, I had a birthday at the end of August and also had a trip to Brisbane and I was lucky enough to be gifted some books from uh, friends and family for my birthday. My wife bought eight of these. Um, she took me on like a book buying tour of Perth City, which was amazing. And um, we'll get to that when we get to that stack of books. Uh, got some in Brisbane, um, had some authors send me some stuff, which is amazing, and I had some pre-orders come in. So I actually did have a fair amount of books come my way in uh, in August. So I thought, let's do just a mini haul here on the channel. Uh, before we jump into that, though, make sure you check in the description box down below for links to my social media and Discord, should you want to come along for the ride. Now, let's jump into the books. So I'm going to start off with some stuff that authors have sent me because I'm I'm always sort of blown away, and I think a lot of us are like this when any author reaches out and says, hey, do you want to be part of a team? Do you want to have a review copy? Can I give you a book in a physical format? And normally I will generally go give me an ebook because I know cost um, and whatnot, but one of these authors is local to me and said that it was all good, and that is going to be Livia J. Elliott with The Genesis of Change. So. Um, Livia sent this one my way. It's a philosophical uh, fantasy novella and ticks all my boxes. Philosophical fantasy novella. I mean, novellas recently, but philosophical, definitely. Um, the the quotes on the back here by Esme, Joshua, and Carl Forshaw had me super excited about this one. Just the premise. I'm looking forward to getting to this one. I keep looking at it. It's not on the shelves yet because I just feel a gravitational pull towards it. So this one may happen sooner rather than later. And I keep it in like an emotional support pile of books that um, I unhealthily have everywhere in the house. Uh, the next set is a full set of a trilogy that was gifted to me by Timothy Wolf. Um, this is The Legend, The Legacy of the Bullum. Uh, so he sent me all three books, which is just amazing and i'm so very grateful so the first one is platinum tinted darkness that ring light actually played nice with that one book two is tears of the maelstrom and some of my favorite artwork uh, that came out of last year i actually had this on my phone cover <laughs> for a little while uh, and also book three the age of arrogance which has just come out this year so those are all fantastic. They look wonderful together on the shelves and these hardbacks are going to be read in 2025. So um, watch out for that. If you want to come along for a buddy read them, let me know because I'll probably do that series over on the Discord if anyone is interested. I've left myself zero room to put books. So they're going to have to sit there. The next thing I will show you is one that came in yesterday. So technically it's not August. This one came in September, um, but I bought it before the load by year started. And this is the second book of the, I don't know what the series is called, but China May Oval. So the Broken Binding did Paradise Street Station and they also did the Scar. So I picked this one up and it is just gorgeous. As always, the Broken Binding do a fantastic job. We'll have a quick look at the Nike. Take that dust jacket off of there. Just the foiling is just beautiful. So, I mean, I never used to be a sprayed edge guy. I always thought they were overrated, but then the broken binding started doing these stenciled sprayed edges and they're just amazing. I have not read, that's a lie. I started Paradise Street Station once and then I didn't continue on with it because I don't think I was quite ready for it. But again, I'm an author I'm very intrigued by. So, I've got these. I will read these. I will make myself read the physical copies, even though I'm always scared about damaging these with grubby hands, but I bought them, I spent money on them. I will read them. So that was a scar by China Mieville. Next up, we have a Kickstarter that I backed, and I feel like half the world backed, at least in my circles anyway. And this is Rob J. Hayes and all the book ones in the the God Eater Saga, I think is the the title of the entire thing. So we've got book one um, of each of the series. So we've got Deathless in the Annals of the God Eater. Whoa. Caught it. 
we have Demon Archive of the God Eater. And these two uh, are quite thin, so nice little ones to fit in. Then we have the chonkiest book I think I've ever seen Rob J. Hayes um, put together. And this is the Age of the God Eater, sorry, book number one, Herald. And look at that. Isn't that just stunning? The wraparound as well. Just some beautiful, beautiful artwork. Um, I'm still not sure on how to read this series. I don't think it's going to be a 2024 read for me, um, but they are beautiful. I will definitely be backing the sets of books two and three when that comes out to have them all. Rob J. Hayes hasn't missed for me yet, so I'm not really concerned that I won't like them when I get to them. I think they're going to be fantastic. I just don't know when that's going to happen. But at some point in my lifetime, they will be read. Uh, one of the birthday presents that I got, oh, it's heavy, um, which I've been eyeing off for such a long time and I've just never pulled the trigger. My mum and dad ended up getting for me, and this is the illustrated uh, edition of the Books of the Earth Sea. So this is all of the books in here, and it's just beautiful. The book is presented so beautifully, and I now no longer have an excuse to not read this or any Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, I definitely want to start with these ones. I know they're rated E for everyone and it's just I've been wanting this edition for so long and I now have it. So um, maybe, maybe 2025. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I know the books in these ones are quite short so I can probably fit them in between other reads. Uh, next up we had a pre-order that came in. So I know the book's been out for a while but like paperback in a specific size hasn't been out so I ordered it when the pre-order came up and this is the battle drum by Sarah L Arifi this is a series I would like to read sooner rather than later with book three has just come out in e-copy I will wait until I can get a physical copy just so I do have them all here um, I've got the books one and two so I can at least start the series so I do have that one and then the next little pile is a pile that um, I got a gift card given to me so my in-laws whenever they ask me for stuff I say, one, don't need to spend money, but gift cards are probably the easiest way to go. So I got an Amazon gift card. Um, I know not everyone loves Amazon, but it is sometimes, unfortunately, the easiest way to get some books our way. And they gave me $100, so I spent uh, that money to get some books here. The first one is probably one of my favorite reads of the year, and that's The Bloodstones by Tori Tech, and I, I have a physical copy of this now. Um, I am trying to get better at reading my e-copies, and then only if I love it, buying a physical copy, because I know that authors make more money off the e-copies, so I'm very conscious of trying to give the money that I can to the authors, because a lot of the money for print copies just goes into the printing, and I know Amazon takes like a mad cut um, for authors, but I adored this book, and I definitely wanted it on my shelf, so I went ahead and picked this one up. Um, one I'm super curious about, and I just love the cover so much that I needed it on my little horror shelf, is Domestication. This is by Shannon Knight. Um, I previously read Wish Givers by Shannon Knight. I think that might have been January, if not December last year. The writing intrigues me, and um, this I, it's not going to do it justice because of that ring light. We've got a gloss cover, but we have like a skeleton, sheep wrapped around, horror on a farm, on a sheep farm. I'm here for it. Spooky season's right around the corner. Next one is a book two of a series that I think is going to work for me, but I haven't read it yet, but it was also quite cheap to finish off the um, the voucher that I had there. This is Engines of Chaos by R.S. Ford. I generally will... So who recommended this series? I think it was Elle or Elliot Brooks um, over on her channel, and I bought the first one on the recommendation of political fantasy because I do love political fantasy. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this series, but it's intrigued me enough that I now have book one and book two of, I'm going to say a trilogy that could be just me reaching because a lot of fantasy has trilogies in it. Um, and then I found a whole bunch of other stuff by this author. So I'm curious, I'm very curious about reading RS Ford, but now I have books one and two and coming into basically someone who's going to be reading from their shelves for <laughs> I would say one to two years um, from next year I have a lot of books um, to get through and the last one I got was is a little bit beat up but I've been looking at this book for a very very long time so I got a second-hand edition of Isolate by or Isolate by L.E. Modisette Jr. and I just love this hardback it has a rip in it but we'll ignore that and I just I don't know, it's something about this cover and like the noir, like fantasy noir, 
really calls to me. So I don't know if anyone's read this. If you have, let me know. I have a couple of books of the Magic of the Recluse as well that I haven't read, which, you know, span over quite a long period of time. And then this series is definitely calling to me more. And I think I saw this one on a Holly Hearts Books haul or like new release years ago and i'm still thinking about it so i went ahead and bought that one too um even if it's a little bit banged up we'll give it a go we'll see we'll see but i still uh, really enjoy the cover and sort of the setting and just the fantasy noir just sort of fascinates me which brings me to the haul that my wife bought me which is insane so for my birthday she basically said look I know we've been saving money, but I've been saving money for months to go and do this. So I've just put little bits and pieces aside. We're going on a book haul crawl. And uh, we did that. So we went into the city and one of my favorite bookshops here is called Stepan's. He tends to really accommodate um, LGBTQIA plus books is a big advocate for that part of the community. He's a huge advocate for neurodivergence to the fact that he's built his shop around being able to move it for wheelchair access. Every bookshelf is on wheels so that if people need access, he's also paid for a bigger door to allow people into the store. Um, he talks to people and knows who needs quiet time and who doesn't. He knows who to talk to and who wants to have that interaction, who doesn't. It's just a very, a very humbling experience to have someone who is so attentive to their customers and their audience and be genuinely involved and love the things that um, he is selling so i try and support that bookstore as much as i can if i'm going to go and buy trad pub books but he also told us last time he was there that he's starting to bring in some indie australian authors and interview them and things like that so super cool super cool bookshop um, and then i also love elizabeth which is a secondhand bookstop bookshop here in perth so we tend to go to two of them so um, we went through those went to white dwarf um, but i didn't find anything in white dwarf the last time we were there so we didn't do it this time the first one and like the prettiest one that i have here is going to be a copy of a book i'm very curious about i'm not going to read this edition because i have the e-copy as well um, but this is the three body problem by c shin lu um, i hope i pronounced that somewhat correctly there's eight years of mandarin i took um, could have failed me i'm not sure but it was these sprayed edges and i was like yes need that in my life um but haven't even taken the price off it yet this is just beautiful more and more i'm gravitating towards sci-fi that deals with heavy thematic sci-fi that doesn't necessarily have a super large plot even though i do like plot i've just said that i love plot in a different video and i do with sci-fi i really like the exploration of themes um and i'm looking forward to that in this particular series so i haven't read it yet i'm very curious we'll give some of those end papers as well just beautiful stuff that we have and that was probably the, the priciest one that um, i bought in there Speaking of sci-fi and thematics, uh, I mean, this is cyberpunk technically, but one I've been very curious about for a long time is uh, Neuromancer. So I bought the hardcover SF Masterworks edition um, of this one. There's only a few of the hardcovers that I'm interested in getting. I mean, there's plenty in the SF Masterworks that I'm interested in looking at. Um, but yeah, this one definitely caught my eye and I've been looking for it and they had the hardcover. So I went ahead and picked that up. Um, this, next, this next book is one that I've looked at every time I've been in this store. So I've been in Stepan's three times this year. I've looked at the book every time I've been there. The fourth time I was like, I just, I have to get it because I can't stop looking at it. I'm so gravitated towards it. And that is Calypso. And this is a book of sci-fi poetry. It is so beautiful. And also what drew me to it was the, I don't know what they're called, the thing on the front. It's so thoughtful, elegant, and exciting by Sarah Waters, who was an author that was very, very important to me growing up um, when I was trying to come to terms with my identity long before I was a trans dude. Um, so I don't know. I, that's just sort of caught my attention. It's absolutely stunning. I love poetry. I like how these poems are set out. They're not all, they don't all follow a format. So I'll probably read that pretty slowly over the course of the year, just sitting with it if I have you know, a glass of whiskey, like a pretentious knobhead that I am, and I want to sit down with a poem. An author I've been quite intrigued by and has been on my radar for a long time, recently reinvigorated by a video over on Tory Talks channel, is Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. 
hopefully I pronounced one of those correctly. And uh, I'm very, very intrigued by this author. Um, I think fantasy romance. I'm not 100% sure on the romance element there. I, if I'm remembering correctly, that's sort of in the vein that it's in, but written incredibly well. Now, I think this is a seven book series, but they did have the first one. So I picked this one up in the secondhand bookshop um, and the condition is just fantastic. Now, speaking of fantastic condition in secondhand bookshops, I this is another one that I've walked past a couple of times and I've not picked it up and I just sort of went, you know what, maybe it's time to pick it up. So this is an omnibus of Peace and War by Joe Holdman. If anyone's read this, let me know because I don't, I've not heard people talk about it um, on the channel here, but it says War, Free and Peace. So there are the three separate stories that we have here. It's, sorry, Forever War, Forever Free, Forever Peace um, that they have. So Reluctant, Hero, First Contact, Aliens, Military, Sci-Fi, Space Opera-esque, I think. Um, that's pretty much, I mean, the cover drew me to it. Simple pop of color and then reading the back. And I was like, that sounds amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and pick those up. A series that I've been gravitating towards, at least the first book on my shelves a lot, is The Protectorate by Megan O'Keefe. And I have Velocity Weapon up on the shelves, but I picked up book two and book three. So I'm really, when I go to bookstores, you probably notice a theme over the next couple of book hauls is I'm looking to get books two, book twos, book threes, finished series that I already own so I can read the books that I already own. Um, so I really, I was just going to pick this one up. I had the second book of the Devin Madsen series in my hands and they're like, oh, we have a stack of the third book as well, just out back if you want to buy that one. So I ended up finishing off the, uh, the trilogy there. I have heard that Megan O'Keefe's writing gets really, really good in the next series that she's written, not related to this one, um, but I, I definitely want to start with the protector here. And the last two that I have to show you today actually came from Blind Date with Books set up. So what Elizabeth's The Secondhand Bookshop does is they have a stand at the front and also sometimes in the store where they will wrap books up and they'll put a um, like what themes are in the book. And I picked two of those. Both had horror. Uh, one said classic, so horror, psychological horror, atmospheric, classic. And I thought it was going to be Shirley Jackson, but it ended up being um, Woman in Black by Susan Hill, which is also another book that I've wanted to read for a very long time. Um, again, that gloss is not going to work that well in the ring light there, so oh, maybe. Um, I've watched the movie. I really enjoyed the movie. I have not read the book, so I'm looking forward to reading that one at some point. And the other one I picked up was also, it said, uh, Philosophical Horror in it and that was pretty much what sold me i can't remember the other things that were on there but i was like philosophical and horror i'm in and this is camus 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 the plague um albert camus uh the plague so when i showed this to my buddy ryan they were pretty ecstatic that i got this in a blind date with a book i've not heard about it before i know nothing about it um but i'm definitely here for i do like i'm getting dystopian feelings the plague maybe that's just me i've not read the back I just tried to look at it right then, but I don't have time to read it <laughs> while I'm filming. Uh, so if anyone's read this one, let me know. Let me know if I'm going to love it because I am really enjoying those philosophical reads right now. Those were the books that I have acquired over the month of August. Like I, I couldn't do that in the reading wrap up because it was too big. Um, but I don't know. I would say a fairly modest book haul here on the channel. Is there anything in here you think I have to read? Anything I've read that you've also enjoyed? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like the content, give one of those. If you want to see more of it, click subscribe at your will, and I will catch you in the next video. Ciao.